Welcome back to Balanced Health. In today's healthy shopping feature, we're going to learn what probiotics are and what to look for in choosing one to buy. Joe, tell us about probiotics. What are they? Well, Shirley, I think that's a name that people have heard of. If you ask them about it, they've heard of it, but they're not quite sure exactly what it is. We know what antibiotics are, yes. okay? Well, the thing about antibiotics, when they go in your system, they're indiscriminate as to what they kill. Okay. They kill all forms of bacteria, good and bad. Mm. Probiotics is that form of friendly or helpful bacteria that's in our intestinal tract, predominantly our small and uh, our stomach and, and small intestine, that actually helps take the nutrients of food and break it down in a proper way. Hmm. What's really important about probiotics, especially for our female listeners, is that most bowel conditions in females occur because of an overgrowth of yeast, which is basically mm. a sugar, okay. uh, in their intestinal tract. And that overgrowth of yeast is because of this indiscriminate killing from antibiotics, from food without, you know, that is not nutri nutrient dense. So we find this lack of probiotics in the intestinal system. And I can tell you this, since I have been consistently taking probiotics in the Total Living Drink, scoop of berry and scoop of green every day now for several years, I had what was, I think, clinically diagnosable, at least right on the verge of irritable bowel syndrome. Really? And I was just talking about this the other day. It's been like, you know, Thank God, but it's been a couple of years since I've had any issues whatsoever. Yeah, well, I wonder if women, okay, women tend to have yeast infections. Is that because of the Absolutely. hormones or something? No, no, it's because of the overgrowth of sugar in the okay. intestinal system. Hmm. So probiotics is key. And what we did here today is we just have a couple of things, that, uh, areas that we've seen people get probiotics for. Okay. This is a tablet form of probiotics. It's a very low amount. You want at least 10 billion cells per serving. That sounds like a lot, but that's what you want, <laughs> and 10 how many billion would, cells. Would be in these this then? is probably about a billion. Oh, okay. So it's really wow. not enough. This yogurt, which a lot of people buy, yogurt has anywhere from 28 to 35 grams of sugar. Now, what was the thing I just said we were trying to defeat <laughs> yeah. with probiotics? Right. Yogurt is not a sort yeah. of acidophilus. Well, something... I, it makes sense that yogurt would have a lot of sugar because it's so sour. Yeah, and it has to, <laughs> they have to sweeten it up yeah. that way. You want your um, probiotics to come in a base of oligosaccharides. You're not going to remember that word, no. but it's an environment that actually lets the probiotics or the friendly bacteria thrive. Huh. And that's what our products are loaded with, is, is that oligosaccharides. We can check on the spelling of that word later. <laughs> okay, well, that's great. All right, well, um, continuing our discussion on the truth about supplements, we're throwing our next question to Dr. Walt. Barbara from California emails this question. Does everyone need the same vitamins and minerals, or do we need an individual mm. plan? It's a very good question. Mm -hmm. Let's see what Dr. Wall has to say about this. The answer to that question is no. For example, women of reproductive age, we know that when those women take folic acid on a daily basis, whether it's in food or in a supplement, that should they get pregnant, they reduce their risk of birth defects by 50%. Well, obviously that's not a supplement that's gonna help men because <laughs> men don't get pregnant. We know that smokers who take antioxidants like beta carotene are actually more at risk to get lung cancer or other types of cancers. We know that men and women may benefit from calcium. So there's some supplements that are good for everyone. There's some that are just good for some people. So vitamins and minerals should be taken based upon your age, any illnesses or other medicines you're taking, and your gender. I recommend that you talk to your pharmacist or doctor about A, whether you should take vitamins, and B, if so, what would be the best one for you? Well, we do agree with Dr. Walt that uh, you do need an individual plan. Uh, right? I mean, I think that's what he was saying, that it, you, you might need certain things if you're pregnant, you might need certain things if, but he did say something that I would challenge, and, and that's it. He said, ask your doctor if you need vitamin supplements, and I'm afraid if you do that, some doctors may say no, and I think we all do. Uh, you know, I think that in this day and age, what most of the physicians are saying is, you know, a, a daily multivitamin is probably not going to hurt you. Mm -hmm. You got to remember something, Shirley. Most physicians had one four-hour course on nutrition throughout that's their true. collegiate careers. And that course was predominantly centered around uh, what, it, what food patients should be given. So in other words, oh. if, if you're, you know, just had a heart attack, you know, cut back on salt with those patients, huh. you know, or, and I'm oversimplifying that. And I, I don't mean to do that other than to say um, that's not really an area of their training. Uh, that's taking nothing away from their expertise and what they do. Right. But 
Um, so I, I don't think, you think that, that's changing a little bit, Joe. Oh, don't you absolutely think that in changing. medical school, I know with my daughter-in-law, I think when she was in medical school, there really is more because even the medical, the traditional medical community is seeing the benefits of supplements, don't you think? They're seeing the benefits of supplements and they're seeing that we have become a culture, a byproduct of we are what we eat. And they have seen what obesity has yes. done. So they're seeing exactly. that, the, you know, we're not eating right, so we're short of nutrients. So one of the ways to get them is supplementation. You know, in, in the Kylea products to show you in a total living drink, both the berry and the greens, physicians never have an issue with it because it's a food-based product. It is. You know, mm -hmm. so it's really just kind of food made convenient. But just quickly kind of uh, back to Dr. Walt's thing. The answer is we do need a tailored program, but there is a foundation that everybody should embark upon. Everybody should be taking in vitamins and minerals every day, amino acids, antioxidants, probiotics, digestive enzymes, and some immune boosting herbs and blood purifying mm. herbs. Throughout our daily life, we need that variation, that combination to be taken in our body. And that's every day. everyone. That's everyone. everyone. Okay. Now, so that's the base. Now we go from the base and we start refining a little bit. Well, I'll take myself for example. I'm 48 years old, I'm a male. I should be on a prostate formula, mm -hmm. okay? Um, let's take yourself, for example. If you're taking a, a daily thing and you see that your folic acid level is low, um, you know, that's something that has been proven even in women past childbearing ages, really? that folic acid is still very, very important nutrient uh, in, in women. Same thing with choline and inositol. Uh, we, we call it brain food. People that suffer from brain fog or, you know, hmm. lack of ability to concentrate and things like that will benefit from those kind of things. If you're dealing with weight issues, energy okay. issues, digestive issues, this is where you kind of tailor. You know, we have a, a, a product that, called Joint Life at Kylea that has just seemed to be a wonderful thing for people with mild to moderate um, joint issues, you know, and arthritis issues. Now, but a product like that, does it work for everybody? No, why? I don't know. Hmm. You know, I don't know. I really? do know this, it does help a lot of people. And you know, it, you spend thirty or forty dollars. If it doesn't help, you still take a nutrients in your body, and there's really no downside. Yeah. Before you go to some of the drugs and stuff <clears> like that, and that's kind of yeah, exactly. A philosophy. And especially people in our audience who are forty-five, fifty, and older. I mean, you are going to start having more joint issues. I think I highly recommend the Joint Life. I mean, I just think it's a good thing to take. Well, what about taking large doses of of a certain nutrient supplement to cure an illness or cure a condition? What do you say about that? Well, I think that there are times, Shirley, where that is appropriate and applicable, but if it's not under the consult of a health professional, okay. you are really going to put yourself in a trick bag, you know? Mm -hmm. um, we hear people using 50,000 milligrams of vitamin C a day mm. uh, to, you know, fight cancer and so on and so forth, and there's really no scientific evidence that anybody taking those kind of doses has actually beaten mm. cancer because of the vitamin C. And yet, like with my husband's case when he had prostate cancer, they, they prescribed very large doses of, say, melatonin and green tea extract and things like that. So if you are under the, under the uh, uh, guidance of a nutritional expert, then you think that, that's that okay. That's a wise thing to do, and we'll talk about more of that when we come back. Remember, if you'd like to order a DVD of this show, just give us a call and be sure to visit the Balanced Health page at TLN.com for more information on this show and supplementation. Well, coming up, budgeting for your health. How much do you have to spend on supplements? Stay tuned and find out. <laughs> 